welcome back to Green Cave. Today we're going to have a look at the MPT solid charge controller model MPT 7210A. It's a charge controller that is readily available on eBay, AliExpress, Banggood, and so on. It's a cheap MPT charge controller, but it's not a charge controller that, that you're used to when it comes to MPT. Firstly, it is not powered by the battery. It act, it's actually powered by the solar panel. So that, that's the first thing that is kind of strange on, on this one. Since you, you usually want to have uh, it powered by the batteries, but they um, have thought the other way around. Why waste um, battery power during the night time? Uh, to just power up the charge controller. Let's just use the power from the solar panels to power the charge controller. And I guess that's fine in a way. Uh, also, you need to have a lower voltage on the solar panels than you have on your battery pack. So, for instance, uh, if you have a 12 volt battery pack, then you need to make sure that uh, your uh, your uh, solar power panel will never exceed the maximum voltage of the batteries. So this is from 24 volts and upwards. And if you have a 24 volt battery pack, then you pretty much can only uh, use uh, solar panels, 12 volt solar panels in parallel mode into this one, because this is a boost converter. It's not a buck converter that pretty much every other uh, MPPT solar charger is. So this will only allow the voltage to go higher than the solar panels. All other MPPT solar charge controllers that I've seen is the other way around. They take a high voltage and convert it uh, to low voltage by higher amperage. Uh, I will show you how this works exactly. So we're going to need this power supply once again and now I'm not going to connect it to the battery terminals here because that one will not power on um, to be honest I didn't read the specification uh, fully before I bought it I watched like half a YouTube video uh, from another guy reviewing this and I got all excited that he mentioned it's a cheap MPPT so solar charge controller so I pretty much started to browse eBay meanwhile watching the YouTube uh, video and before he mentioned that it was actually a boost converter I have already ordered it So like that. So we have now connected a positive lead and a negative lead to the solar panel um, terminal here. Let's simulate the solar panel here. We set the voltage to, let's say, 22 volt that's a usual uh, peak voltage uh, peak power voltage for solar panel and we connect it right and for the sake of it let's just say that we have a 50 watt solar panel so, or yeah 40 watt so let's do 2 amps here so I will now start it up okay so you can see that we have 22 volts going into the charger from the batteries and we see that we have a K voltage going out we have 21.66 volts going in out I believe that we can uh, turn it off yeah so we have the we had the voltage set to 
20 volts there. So now we'll try to adjust it down to let's say 14.7. It allows me to do that. I need to shut it off first. So 14 point seven volts okay on and you can see that it will not go out the uh, it will not convert the voltage down to 14.7 volts uh, volt here you can verify this with uh, our multimeter Try to find a spot where you can see it as well. Let's see, you can see it here. Yeah, you can see it just fine there. So we take our negative lead through multimeter. Put it in here. Like that. And take our positive lead. So it says 21.7 volts there, and that is not the 14.7 volts that we had entered. But let's go down to let's say 12 volt on our solar panel. So we have 12 volts on the solar panel, and now we have 14.7 volts on the output from this one. So what that means is pretty much what I just said in the beginning. Um, you cannot connect a, a 12 volt battery pack to this and believe that you can uh, uh, charge it safely with one uh, 12 volt solar panel. You actually need to have a 24 volt battery pack and then charge it from a, let's say a 12 volt solar panel. But what, what is the use case for this then? Well let's say if you have an electric scooter or an electric tuk-tuk. You know the kind of uh, uh, three-wheeled uh, taxi motorcycle slash cars that they drive around in a in, uh, large part of uh, Asia. Uh, they, they are getting, uh, they, they are beginning to adapt to more, more and more electrical uh, power instead of gasoline and uh, diesel powered engines in, in those. So let's say that you have a really big um, 18 12 volt uh, solar panel mounted on the roof of the tuk tuk, and you have a uh, 24, 36, 48 or 72 volt battery pack then this can actually take the voltage from the solar panel and put it into the batteries just fine because it works the other way around so what this, what that will do is that it uh, will allow those people to have uh, not a whole array of solar panels just to bump up the voltage but they can have one solar panel panel and then use this converter uh, no this solar charge controller to actually charge a battery pack with greater voltage so I see uh, a very good use case for this one unfortunately not really useful for me right now since I have um, a 20 uh, 24 volt um, uh, battery system here but I have a um, 52 volt uh, ma maximum voltage uh, of, of my uh, solar panels But let's see what we have inside of it. Uh, let's um, turn this off. Yeah, and also as you noticed, when I turn it back on now, I need to turn this on. It will automatically start. <clears throat> 
this is not something that it does from the beginning. Uh, you actually need to um, go into the settings menu in a more complicated way than uh, just to push the setting. You need to turn it off and you need to push, uh, I think it's the arrow down and the settings at the same time for a special amount of uh, uh, time. And then eventually you will reach this uh, on symbol here. And if you save it in the on state, then it will actually turn on when the solar panel starts to produce any volt uh, meaningful voltage to it. Otherwise, it, when it's done and the sun hits the solar panel, it will just start up the controller, but it will not start, start to charge your batteries. So you have to go out to the charge controller and push OK to actually start it. But it is possible to make it auto start like I have done here. Um, and it took a while uh, with, the, with the manual to actually figure out how to do this, but it is possible. And it didn't remember my 14.7 uh, volt setting here now, so that's also an issue. There are some bugs, but uh, and I know that it can be done if you save it in the correct order and everything like that. So, but we can take it down uh, apart and uh, see a bit more inside of the build quality. I haven't actually done this myself yet, but how hard can it be? So this is how it looks from the inside. So far so good. There we go. Yep, we have a fan cable here. It's socketed, so that's great. We can just remove it like that. We have a small four centimeter fan here 12 volt job 80 milliamps that's good uh, it looks like we can get the whole PCB out here okay so we have Two ribbon cables, one for the LCD and one for the keys, I would guess. And there we have it. So, we can see that we have two current sensors here. One over here, and one over here. I guess that they measure the current uh, going in from the solar panels. And also the current going out to the batteries because you can specify uh, the voltage and the amperage of the solar panel so you can pretty much program it to use uh, the specified maximum power points of your solar panel and also you can specify how high of amperage it is allowed to charge the batteries with so that you don't uh, destroy your batteries so that's a good feature actually uh, we have a SD micro um, MCU here, microcontroller unit. It's a STM8S00 SK6T6C. So I think this is a 16 bit microcontroller that handles, I would say that handles the DC DC. Um, uh, module block here since I don't see any direct DC DC uh, management ICs on here so I believe that they are using the PVM channels on this one to actually control the MOSFETs here and they have a bunch of OP amps here as well Texas Instrument OP amps Let's see if I can start up the 
and all that kind of flashlight here. Flashlight. Try to focus now. So there's our MCU. STM8. And here we have a lot of OPMs. 22721 Texas Instrument OPMs. We have the crystal and we have the capacitors that is connected to the crystal. We have decoupling uh, capac capacitors here. They're not decoupling, they are the buffer capacitors. Don't know what that really is there. So. Okay, so. Okay, so that is the the MOSFET that controls the output, I would say, yeah. Because it goes from the current sense line here over to that one. And down here, we have the sense leads going from the current sensor. And we have a small DC to DC converter here to power the electronics on the board. Oh, now we have a low voltage dropout uh, regulator here as well. So perhaps this part is, uh, is only for the fan to actually control the fan. Since it's a the fan can have different fan speeds but it's not a PVM enabled fan since it only have two leads here. So I would say that they are varying the voltage to the fan to control the speed. Okay. So overall it's it's actually great build quality here. We have a uh, big uh, copper lanes for, for the high current paths here and they have added extra soldering onto it to allow them to be able to cope with even higher current. So that's a good sign of attention details there. Uh, the cooling lock here is actually screwed down with a screw. So that's always positive. And we have a large uh, inductor here as well, so that will handle the current just fine. So I would say the build quality here is actually really good. We have some loose cooling uh, box here, this one and this one. They should have been gunked down or s screwed down. But otherwise it looks just fine. Uh, looks like we have some kind of programming port here and I would guess that this is a UART port for development purposes while debugging and the development of this unit. That's why they are not populated here with the uh, connection list. Let's see the display module. Okay, so you can see the design here. It is sandwiched together. Mm. FR4 PCB, this uh, plexiglass layer. We have a cutout for the display connector there and you can barely see the traces that goes behind it for push button this is a simple dome push button solution 
that they feel good and sounds good when you push push them. So yeah, I would say that overall I'm actually pleased with the build quality of this unit. It has a well-known MCU manufacturer. Uh, I think that there is a great chance that it's hackable for you to be able to reprogram it with your own software. I don't see any clues on what what the display is, but it's most likely uh, some kind of SPI job or something. Let's see if we can get this back together now. So how was it? Was like this, okay. So we put down this cable here. Left cable right there, and we can push it in. No, we cannot. Because of reasons. I think I have to do it like this. Okay. Yeah, that looks fine. So here comes one for the battery, the solar panel. Okay, so they rely on the fan actually pushing the PCB in position. And do not forget to reattach the fan cable here. Okay, so there we have it. 
the MPT 7210A MPPT solar charge controller but with some quirks so this one is not for most people but at least now you know what to do and if you are one of those people that need one of these devices then you can find them really cheap on eBay I guess they are pretty cheap because there are not too many uses for them correct me if I'm wrong there please but uh, as far as I see in my solar panel system uh, solar setup uh, there, there is no need for it but it's a fun gadget to play with so thank you and see you next time hi thank you for watching my video if you like it don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you like my whole channel please subscribe thank you bye